Hello from Gardening at Duenza here in Ireland and this video is about the three plants that broke my heart. I suppose that no matter how much experience you have at growing plants, there's always going to be one or two that are your absolute Achilles heel. Now, whether you had a particularly bad experience with them that you can point to and say, that's why I went wrong there, or whether it's just irrational. You just know that you really mustn't, mustn't grow that plant again because although you do everything right, it's completely jinxed for you. The first plant I want to talk about here is the bat plant and I'm reminded of this because lots of people in America seem to grow this plant so successfully but oh that has not been my experience and um, I started off many years ago by getting seed and trying to grow the bat plant from seed because you know it's a gorgeous plant it really is and it's black so that's super cool and I had teenage kids at the time so they were always saying oh grow more black plants grow more black plants so anyway I got the seed and I tried and yeah absolutely no luck with that so after a bit I managed to source rhizomes of the bat plant and bought them and planted them and waited a very long time as I recall now this is a good while ago now and um, nothing happened nothing came up and then several months later a little shoot came up and I was so delighted but actually it was just a swan song because the rhizome had already started rotting below soil level and this was just the plant's last ditch attempt at life which it failed at so gone gone and then finally, about two years ago, I came across, I came across a, a life-sized, a fully flowering bat plant in Johnstown Garden Centre, actually. And it was very expensive, but I said to myself, I'm going to treat myself, I'm going to buy this, because I've tried for so many years to, to grow this from seed or rhizome. And anyway, bought the thing, took it home, and do you know... It never did quite well with me. I, I found the best place for it. You know, I read up all the advice, found the best place for it. And, um, but it slowly languished. I mean, it began to, to go downhill. And then I went away on holidays that summer. And I forgot to tell my neighbor to water it because it was a house plant and he usually waters outside. And when I came back from holidays, it was, yeah, no saving it. So now every time I see somebody talking about the plant, bat plant, I think to myself, yes, it's gorgeous, but I've learnt my lesson. I am not going to be trying that one again. No way. And the second plant that's broken my heart was an orchid and it was Dendrobium anosmum, which if anybody out there is growing orchids, you know very well that this is a a cold orchid that needs a dry rest in winter and that's okay because I knew how to do dry rest I mean I've grown Dendrobium nobile for a few years and, and done quite well at that so that was okay as far as I was concerned but it was a whole big deal because there is or was only one orchid house in Ireland over in Meath and um, it's like a nursery a small nursery where the owner sells by mail order and he agreed to let me and my friend come out and see him and we ordered a few plants beforehand and people had told me about this anosmum that he sold that it was really big and I was so excited. So we went out there and had a wonderful day with him and um, I came away with the most beautiful anosmum which was still in dormancy but it was like it was a big plant you know and I brought it into the kitchen and everybody had to go with spraying the roots and all this kind of thing and um, anyway you know like I'm able to do the cold winter rest but I just wasn't able to keep up with this plant's watering requirements in summer and spring and anyway to cut a very long and very painful story short it finally snuffed it was gone 
So, you know, every time I hear about these cold dendrobiums that require winter rest, I just go, ah, ah, I, I, <laughs> I've, I'm totally freaked out by them. Now, I have a couple still, but there's no way I'm going to try an anosmum again. Absolutely no way. <laughs> And the last plant I want to tell you about is the most painful of all. It's my story of the tree fern, or Dixonia antarctica. Now, anybody who grows this plant knows that uh, it's fabulous, absolutely beautiful. Big fronds that come up above the trunk looks so exotic. And um, it's not, of course it's not hardy in our climate, but you know, that's the attraction very often in my case. I love these plants that I know are likely to break my heart. Anyway, tree ferns are very expensive. And I was just um, planting up a new border. I'd done away with the roses and I was setting up the new area that had been the rose garden. And I decided I needed four tree ferns to populate this area and drove all the way down to Limerick to buy them twice, came back with these tree ferns and planted them in the garden and they were pretty, pretty gorgeous. Like, And people came and, oh, you have tree ferns? And yeah, big deal anyway, big deal. Anyway, the previous winter had been one of the coldest in Ireland in history. That was 2009, 2010. And, you know, people had lost plants that they never should have lost. Because in Ireland here, we get away with growing a lot of, like, say, New Zealand plants um, because we have a very mild climate. And anyway, we'd had this cold winter and I thought, well, it couldn't happen again. I'm not going to have a second cold winter. But <laughs> you've guessed it, right? We had two blooming awful winters. Oh, incredible. Like, I think we had minus 17 near to where, um, to where I live um, in County Carlo. And I had taken all the correct precautions. I'd bubble wrapped these, uh, these tree ferns and padded them with straw. I'd done the whole works, the whole kit and caboodle. No one can say I didn't take enough precautions. But it was just, you know, it was just the wrong winter to be trying these plants. And it just leaves such a bitter taste in my mouth because they were so expensive and they looked so gorgeous and I had such great plans for them and they died so miserably the first winter I had them, all four. It was shocking. But I still have the, um, you may see in some of my garden shots that I still have the trunks of the tree ferns in the garden because they don't rot straight away, they continue to be there. And in point of fact, when you buy a tree fern, you're paying for the trunk. So actually, you know, I got something out of it in the end. I still have the drugs in the garden. Uh, anyway, so I will never be buying tree ferns again, it's the long and the short of that. So there you go, that was my video on um, the three plants that have broken my heart and the ones I will never be trying again. And if anybody out there with a YouTube channel wants to do the same uh, video, I'd love to see it. And if you don't have a YouTube channel, I'd love to see the comments below with what has broken your heart, what you've tried to grow and failed at. Thanks very much for watching. Bye now.